Yeah, hello to all our tennis enthusiasts out there. It's uh, Andrew Hill from Sydney. And uh, before I started, I just wanted to, I was impressed. Javier, uh, Javier's talk is uh, a great start, but something like this doesn't happen without the people behind the scenes. So a, a big thumbs up to Mark and Emma. So well done and hopefully uh, all this good energy going to the right place. So um, proud to be part of Between the White Lines. And um, I'm Andrew Hill, I'm based in Sydney, and I class myself as a tennis entrepreneur and a master coach, level four. Uh, one of my roles is director of education for AATC Tennis, which is one of the coaching platforms. And there's a few different colleges of thought. Uh, at the moment, uh, tennis in Australia is sometimes blocked. So we have uh, some excellent opportunities there to share our knowledge through AACT Tennis. So it's uh, also a privilege to be part of this summit and share some ideas. Probably the other big thing, uh, my topic today is how to attract kids to tennis through fun. I'm probably a big kid and probably all those coaches out there, you just wanna have a go and do things. So uh, what I'll do is, uh, where it all started is when I looked at uh, Bjorn Borg back in those days, 74, uh, I was noticing there's some really good programs out there. They, they weren't super duper, but they were getting kids into tennis early. And if we could get the younger children into the game, that was going to increase the base. Uh, as I started to go to university, I was doing some marketing and came up with this idea called Spotlight on Sport. And this is in 1986 where uh, it was a SOS, Spotlight on Sport, an SOS call out to the, anyone, uh, not just on tennis, but just for the whole group of how we should market for kids. Uh, in, 18, in the 90s, I started to get uh, very keen on trying to modify tennis programs to make it more kid friendly. So there was some games uh, playing, not just the game of tennis, but lead up games into the game of tennis uh, with modifications. Uh, we started to write programs and go to schools because all the kids are in the school. So we have to try and package tennis to go to the schools. So when we started our, our target market was really the school teacher. So we wanted to try and create a tennis program that went straight into schools and I actually turned into the state development officer for tennis in New South Wales. And that was my first block. I was going to the school teachers and they were saying, we really don't have time for tennis. We, we focus on team sports. And one of the things I just heard Javier say was uh, we need to focus more on team sports. So we had to come and change our thinking into more of a team-based market so that teachers could actually teach tennis in schools and, and that's where kids start and then they find a coach or coaches work in schools and was an integral addition to a school to uh, help children find the love and passion for the game. One of the other things that Javier just mentioned before, he was talking about pyramids and cylinders. Now, a lot of the time we do think this wide base and it's a triangle shape and you lose kids on the way. And I was really impressed, the cylinder shape is excellent. And one of the things I started to do with tennis, uh, it was like 5% of children in school were playing tennis. So uh, we had to try and one area was the schools, another one was at home. So one of the special things we did in Sydney was we created a mini net and we said that uh, we need to get tennis into every house. Now the houses had one thing in common, they had a driveway. So I'm not sure to the listeners out there if you had played tennis at home or playing against the wall. We created uh, these nets so that they would actually fit on a driveway and we had this mini tennis game going in all these houses. And then they would come and play at school with the mini nets. And we were actually playing on netball courts. So we didn't have tennis courts, we had netball courts and everything was modified. And these nets we started to make as a center piece of the game. It was colorful. 
Uh, one of the best things in 1991, you all remember Ivan Lendl, number one in the world. He came to a shopping centre, we set up the mini net and we played tennis in front of about a thousand people in the shopping centre and then that slowly grew. There were five levels all looking down on the centre court. So the idea to get tennis as a fun and colourful option for children, but at the end of the day we had this small number of people who were the base of the triangle or the base of the cylinder. And I like the idea of the cylinder because you don't want to be losing them on the way, you want to retain them. What I started to do with, I went, was working through Tennis Australia and doing things to try and help tennis in Australia for all the coaches and through education and programs. When I left, I realized that uh, one of the things that I was missing was when I went to schools, I didn't ask the teachers what they wanted. And the teachers said, we would like a program that is multi-sport, of which tennis would be one of those things. So we actually came up with the program called SMASH, Skill, Multi-Actional Sport and Health. And all I did is ask the teachers what they wanted. And then I just wrote that particular program. And in less than a year, it was a national program linking with all tennis coaches who are an integral part of every school. And the tennis coach then turned into their own business development officer. And some coaches went, oh, I really don't want to go to schools. I'm a top level coach. But when you start getting your business plan together, we started to send some of the younger coaches into the school to nearly do talent ID and then attract the children back to the local club. So this program in 1995 went national. Uh, one of our favorite places in Sydney is called White City. And we ran a thing called the Smash Ace program. So kids six years old, right through to 12s, could come and play at the tennis center with the champions of, of those years. And they were having a go, but there was this one model that seemed to work really well. And if I go back to about the 1970s, you had Bjorn Borg, who was a, a champion. I, I actually call him a star, and you'll see why I call him a star later. The, the Swedes had created a game called short tennis, which was mini tennis, and it actually then migrated into the UK. And a lot of players started to play this mini game. So we were using that sort of model in 1995, and we set up a little tournament where kids could play with their friends, and it was just uh, to have a go. And through that, having a go and then being able to sit in a stadium and watch the real players play, it was like the, how do you unlock the passion for the game? So from that one, I stayed at, uh, in White City up until the year 2000. And you'll see on this um, PowerPoint that I've got, I've got Sydney 2000. That's a very integral part for me. So I've been in the game a long time. And everything I'm just about to show you on this uh, PowerPoint, uh, I'll give you a copy of it, but um, my email is there. And if you'd like a copy, you just email me and I've got a copy ready to go. So you can be taking notes, but you've, I've got videos and everything on this slideshow. So in the year 2000, we had the Sydney 2000 Olympics. Uh, I then turned into the head coach of Sydney Olympic Park and we didn't have a whole lot of people. So they actually, one of my jobs was to attract more people to Sydney Olympic Park. Now we did that through these modified sports programs to attract many people. And that's actually what was a great business plan. It actually, parents came in, more coffees, uh, more foods were, uh, the populations of this area was, was actually quite full, even to the point where some of our Sydney international matches, uh, the, the venue was totally full. We we're at full capacity with children and uh, their parents. And it was uh, just starting to get the idea of passion for the sport and coming along, having a go, but then also seeing the champions. Now, going back to where Borg was the star and inspired all these young people, I was very privileged to be the head coach here and I actually got to work on the Leighton Hewitt Tennis Academy. 
where we had 200 of the best players come into Sydney, work with Leighton and top coaches like Tony Roach and Darren Cale. And they actually saw Leighton Hewitt turn number one during this camp. So we always would link these tennis camps or tennis academies with the masters programs and the masters was actually in Sydney that year. And uh, that'll be really hard to replicate, but a lot of these kids who had shirts and are playing with Leighton in the day, had a shirt saying, Hewitt, you can do it. And that night he became number one in the masters. So that'll be very hard to sort of copy, but that sort of energy is how you get that passion. So uh, what we saw with Borg inspiring young Swedes, they had this, uh, the short tennis program. We started a tennis identification program and to attract more people into the base. So that cylinder is now a very wide cylinder. It's like a vat. And the idea was to attract more at the bottom through multi-sports and retain them and actually show them the love of tennis. And, and that's where a real business plan starts to happen. Now, when we were doing this program, we were like the Pied Piper. We started to attract a lot of kids to the game of tennis and we were having a lot of fun it was very active and it was also keeping kids healthy and active, which was a very big initiative in, in Australia. Uh, the government has put a lot of money into programs to help coaches get kids healthy and active. So it was ticking a lot of boxes. And one of the other parts was when we were playing tennis, we had a lot of the boys, but the girls, sometimes we had a lower participation rate. So, Sydney Olympic Park really became quite alive with children, boys, girls, and we'd play netball, we'd play girls sports, boys sports, we'd play mixed sports. And the idea was to entertain the children, have fun, and then they might stay in and then continue on the pathway to become uh, future stars as well. Now, as I finished my tenure there, Sydney Olympic Park, I didn't leave the park, I left the tennis court. And Sydney Olympic Park said, this guy has a way of attracting people to our arenas. So the other big thing about Sydney Olympic Park was it is so busy. So a lot of Olympics areas sometimes turn into a very desolate sort of spot. Sydney Olympic Park, even today is thriving. It's actually 20 years since the 2000 Olympics and I'm still there and with the Olympic torches and Paralympic torches, sharing it with the community and inspiring people to reminisce of how good it was. Probably Sydney was at its best in 2000. So with this one, we created a program after leaving the tennis center and went into the full park called the Sports Star Program. And I saw the energy of Leighton and how he could share that energy with all these students. And, uh, but it's very hard to take Leighton out of his tournament program. So I created a character called Sports Star. Now, AJH Sports, uh, we've got, if you wanted to know our philosophies, I've got some videos there, how we did it. I've got a promotional video of how, what we do on court to uh, get it back to the real game. But they're videos that you can look at later. Uh, a lot of these things are shared and you're welcome to, um, if you're interested in those sort of things, you go there and it might just build your philosophy for your coaching program. When, it, uh, when I have a close look at what we did with Sports Star, we came up with this idea as it takes a village to raise a child. So the teachers, the coaches, the parents, we all work together. But what was happening in Australia in this case was there was a lot of kids and they were at a very low physical in fact, they got a D rating physical activity. So that's why the government came on board and said, we need to change this. So with Sports Star, I started to, you can see some of these figures here with the 5%, were playing tennis, but 99% of kids were doing sports and creative arts. So where we started with modified tennis, it then turned into uh, other people were coming up with tennis programs, but uh, there was a little bit of a fallout uh, with people coming up with these things, but there was no pathway. 
So the sports star pathway allowed people to try many things and create an athlete. And tennis was one of those things of which one pathway could continue on and continue those numbers. And even to today, we're still doing that one. We're actually doing that uh, complementary of the, the main structure in Australia. So you've got Tennis Australia, but AATC Tennis has got a whole lot of coaches working together. And we're working as small business people where we look after your business and we can share concepts and then come together to make tennis great within Australia because we've been there, we've seen it, and I've seen everyone work together. So I'm sort of hoping this is a great platform where that can happen again, and uh, hopefully we get all very good contacts. Now, the reason for this TV, what was happening is a lot of these kids were going on their phones and on, on computer screens and not getting active, but I could see that that's how we talk to children. And we sometimes talk to the parents exactly the same way, Facebook, all those things. So we tried to turn the TV screen into a positive experience and also passive screen time, turn it into, like if you put a bit of music on it, you turn it into an active screen time. So the whole idea, and this is where the government got behind us to improve the next generation with this positive uh, energy. Now, here are a whole lot of videos. If you wanted to have a look at, uh, there's, there's a whole lot of TV concepts here. I will touch this guy over here because this is sports star just having a bit of a hit. He turns up the schools. Here he comes at you. And the idea behind sports star is anyone can be sports star. Uh, we have boys, girls, we have special needs. And as soon as they get in the sports star suit, we might forget some of our real champions out there, but he's like a Mickey Mouse character and the kids gravitate to this character straight away. And um, we, we have a lot of fun. This is where I'm just a big kid. Uh, we have TV shows that uh, over here, Sydney Weekender, where kids come for free to Sydney Olympic Park. So my job for Sydney Olympic Park is to attract populations to the park and kids get to try everything. Of, of which one of those sports is tennis. And it's amazing how many times I can create that pathway back to the tennis centers. Now, um, Sydney Olympic Park doesn't really have its own population. So people come from a long way away to join in the fun. And if you wanna have a look at what we do, there's parachutes, there's color, there's music, there's dancing. And this is a really big thing. We started to attract a lot of the girls back into a lot of these sports. So they came for the dancing and singing and next thing they're playing and trying sports. And we started to even have a goal of trying to find our next number one tennis player in, in Australia uh, by having this increased base at the bottom. Now with the girls, they tried the sports. The other thing that happened is the boys started doing some singing and dancing as well and doing fitness workouts, it was amazing. But it's all aimed at primary school kids. And we had such a great time just watching, like we have a lot of fun. And the kids come along and they get high fives and smiles, they get photos. And you'll see the impact that we have when I show you some of the statistics later on. Uh, up here, uh, we have another video with Totally Wild. I've got some young kids who are six who are at, elite athletes just for their age they're just looking amazing but that is through playing a lot of sports and then tennis is such a great sport in that you can use all those skills in the one game uh, when we play we actually create environments where they can do team sports individual sports but they play in groups so that they can be with their friends so i definitely recommend go through there's a lot of videos there a lot of fun uh, You'll beat sports star. He doesn't talk, but he turns up at assemblies. So principals allow me to get up there and spread the word of being healthy and active. The kids, as soon as they walk out, there's this cheer, but they're not cheering for me. They're cheering for sports star. And sometimes he's just the uh, sports leader of the school. So he's a young kid and he's waving at all his friends. And it's like this super energy that's shared. Now, um, when we go and do our thing, there's a story. 
And the story, it's amazing how many TV people come up and say, we want to do uh, the morning news or something and radio shows. So there's two radio interviews here of how we did it. And with the stars, I'm talking to all the coaches out there. These stars speak many languages. So it's just, it's a local community program or system. And the Sports Star program can be introduced anywhere to inspire kids to become healthy and active. And one of the best ways is through tennis. Now, I was telling you the impact of what we're having. So the radio shows and everything. Um, this is uh, when we do our programs, we focus on active but creative kids. So when someone is being, um, needs a rest, we can actually channel and learn through our creative or passive time and then get ready to go again. But uh, music, um, dancing, singing, they're all things that we can actually add into the syllabus. And this is why teachers welcome us into their schools. We're not just focused on tennis, we're focused on something for the whole school. And that's when we get in there, I'm dressed as a tennis coach, I've got a tennis racket in my hand and it's amazing how we can do talent ID and work out within the school system. And I'm nearly like a, a part of the staff now where I can just walk in and ask to do different sports. Uh, my tennis over a year plan, I might do tennis one term, but I'm there every, every term doing other sports. Uh, which leads me into our next slide. The Sports Star program, it's free and it's on a website. There's 15 sports and there's 12 languages. And the way it works is there's these sports cards. There's five parts to every card and kids can look at it on their phone. Uh, there's videos and cartoons and parents, teachers and kids can help themselves learn skills and the more skills they have, the more active they'll become. So Sports Star works on learn the skills, play the game. This opens up a massive area for us. So at our tennis court, kids come to the court, but then we started getting these massive contracts with the government and they'd get us out in Sydney Olympic Park, they'd get us out to schools. We play a whole lot of different sports, but at the end of the day, you can even see these two areas here, they're on a tennis court, we're playing sport or uh, all the sports are on a court which leads us into this other program that we set up in 2018 with AATC tennis which is called the court sport program so it's how to have fun on your tennis court attract more populations and then when they're having a break one of the areas is tennis and it's amazing how everyone is attracted especially if you're doing some tricks on the court the kids are attracted and they want to try tennis and these are kids who might not have thought of tennis, but uh, after a while, they're pretty well balanced in what they're doing and they go home and that's how you can actually do your talent ID, but it's also how you do your promotion. We have these events, a whole year plan of events, and we're quite busy. Uh, we have a staff of 10 and these, these star characters, you can see they're smaller. They're the kids who want to get up on stage and the councils actually hire us to attract people to local communities. So we do things at shops. In fact, STAR stands for school talent area, which is shops and parks and clubs. Region is your council and S stands for state, which is Sydney Olympic Park for us. Now that same model can be cloned anywhere in the world and um, any state. And the idea is that it looks after local communities with a pathway to the top level, but the idea is to have a go and do your best. Now, I was mentioning before the 20th birthday of the Sydney Olympics, we're still there. And the other day they brought the mascots out. So these mascots actually do quite a lot for us. So Australia Day, uh, they're the Aussie stars at Easter, they're the E stars, um, but they're actually taken out on the harbour. There's a whole lot of different things that we do. And there's a video there of, at the moment, we've got the Paralympic torch and the Olympic torch, and we're sharing the spirit of the Olympics 20 years on. So it's, it's really nice to know that we're still welcome there. It's because we attract so many people to 
to Sydney Olympic Park. Now with this, here's the power of it. We have an impact on tourism. So we're playing fun, we're playing tennis, uh, we're attracting many people. And this is our latest highlight. We just hit 11 million hits uh, on Google Maps. So, and that comes from not just my camera. When the kids come in, we take a photo of them smiling with the stars. We post it on Stars TV, but it's what they do with that. They repost it, and that's why we're getting those high hits. So um, thanks to all those kids and parents out there because they're helping us get these uh, high records. This is in my area, but the whole system can easily be transferred to another area. So we have a license there purely to keep the quality level up. And um, we have stars all around the world uh, who are looking after their local communities. But it just starts with someone active and someone who's a good leader. And then the next thing, um, we're doing crazy things. One of the games is hide and seek around Sydney. So the stars hide, kids try and find us. And when they find us, we play games of different sports and different things. So we'd love to get you involved. Uh, our team, I couldn't do this without the team. We have like a training system in place. So all the young high school students, boys and girls come in and work with us. Uh, we train them up on holidays. So we've got the holidays coming up soon. Even with COVID, uh, we've got everyone trained at a higher level, just making sure that um, we respect safety and things like that. And what we do is we're sharing the energy through games and we can space everyone out. In fact, tennis is a perfect game to give you space, but be active and healthy. Uh, sometimes the stars will get up on stage, Sydney Christmas Parade, and there was uh, 200,000 people that day and we led the parade. So, and Sports Star has all these friends and there's all the subjects. There's stars for everything because we want kids to be very holistic in and very happy and active in everything they do. Now I've got my email and if you do send me an email, I'll send this back, uh, this slide back to you because those videos, there's a whole lot of clues in there on how you can do it for yourself. Uh, some websites. So my particular website I've got uh, is based in Sydney and we've got uh, one website, but for different areas. Uh, the one that is really good, the Sports Star website is free and I get coaches. I work with coaches in different areas and I don't give it to the schools. The local coach gives that free resource to the schools because they care about the kids' health in their local area. Once there, uh, I know I'll be talking later on how to make your centre the centre of, or your tennis centre the centre of the community. And this leads into a thing called Stars TV. We have created a kids TV show about being healthy, active and creative. Parents love it. So they want to come in. Our next episode is actually the next tennis camp we do. You now it's a tennis and sports camp. The children will just join in and kids, parents will see them and they'll be able to activate uh, the children, uh, they normally want to come back with their friends because they showed them uh, themselves on TV. And it's, it's uh, positive self-esteem just rises when they smile and also when they see themselves doing positive things. There's a, another free website that I have called tenniscoachacademy.net. And it's a whole lot of resources to help coaches like yourself they're free, some of the resources, some of the things are there that are best practices around the world. But I just put it all into a library just to make sure that coaches could have options and do their job better. So my way of helping is to give you not my knowledge like Javier did. And there's a whole lot of other people on this uh, summit at the moment. And we'll be sharing what we did. Now the last one, especially if you're an Aussie coach, uh, the history of ten tennis coaching in Australia was created because I've seen it at its best. And at the moment, it's not looking as good as what I saw. So when you look back into your history, you start to get an idea of how not to do something. So I put the history together so that we don't follow the bad path. And hopefully through something like this summit, we can make positive change 
and really make an impact on tennis and get it back there. In Australia, we it was in the top five sports. And now it's probably in the out of the top 20. And we have perfect conditions for tennis. Uh, the individual teams, uh, individual sports sometimes causes a bit of trouble. So what we have to do is make sure that um, we're trying to fix that problem and plug the gaps, get people to try tennis and also stay in the game. So it's um, a lot of these ideas, I'm happy to talk with you after the summit. Uh, you can, if you're in, I, I should have put my WeChat and my WhatsApp numbers up there, but through my email, I can connect with you and talk and we can come up with ideas. But I'd love to be able to share the uh, concept because it's something that will help your business and it's something so simple and I don't have to travel. I can actually do everything the way that we're learning online. Uh, last year, I was lucky to be invited to China for three trips, fully paid trips to try and help kids in China to become more active. And uh, I, I don't speak Chinese, so I had a great translator, but it was amazing. What I found is a smile is an international language. And when I was over there, I had a picture of Sports Star, which was a manila folder. And the children would come up and they would migrate to me, even though I was in a suit. And everyone else was thinking, what is it? And it's the sharing of the smile, sharing of the positiveness. And every tennis coach, you know, we can do so much good out there. if We can uh, have the right resources, work together and get tennis uh, as an option for all these kids. And I, I like what Javier said about the next generation. We talk to them on the court. We can talk to them and play tennis in shops. Uh, you can play tennis online in a way. But, uh, and I started to see the idea of, I talk to the kids through their phones and invite them to camps and uh, after school and just to keep kids busy. And it's actually turned into an amaz amazing business for myself. And I actually have shared these sort of concepts with people in different states and locally. And we just work together to improve the numbers. And for me, I would say tennis is definitely a numbers game. And if I can increase your base that, uh, and, you, and you use your cylinder and keep them in the game, that would be amazing. So um, hopefully, if I'm, I'm open to questions, uh, I've, this slide will also show you what STARS is. I've actually just jumped onto the next page there, but that'll be my next talk. And we'll talk about how STARS can be activated your way. Uh, we've just given you a little bit of a, a taster of the Sports Star program, but uh, STARS happens in schools, coaches do their promotion, and what happens is we think about them coming back to the club, but uh, sometimes the shops invite us or actually pay us to come in and actually entertain kids and bring them to the shops or local parks. So we link with a lot of the local parks and getting kids out in the fresh air. Uh, the region is for us, that's called our council. And the councils actually run a lot of these programs and pay all our coaches to do this so that the programs remain free for the community. And that same thing happens at state level where we have um, Sydney Olympic Park paying us as coaches, as professionals to attract kids and bring them into the park. And that actually passes on to, they get lunch, they get drinks, they, it, it activates a whole community. So uh, thank you for listening and hopefully um, if you've got any questions, you can either send me something or I'll stay online and answer any questions I can. Thank you very much, Andrew. And his next talk will be on Saturday at I believe it's 3.45 p.m. That's correct. Awesome. Take care. Thank you.